before I begin, would it be possible for you to allow me to share my screen? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's all right. So, guys, how are you doing? Um, doing you great. Okay. Excited. Right. You excited? Yeah, you do. You do sound like you're excited. And it's <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, so I'm glad that you are energetic still. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And well, I, we're all excited to have you guys on board. And today's going to be uh, today's session is going to be really productive. Okay. Hang on. There you go. Now I can share my screen. Hang on just a second. All right. So before we begin, I just want to lay down some house rules first. So if you need to say, if you need to grab a drink or grab a bite of food, uh, you may do so. You don't need to get my permission or anything like that even if you need to step out to go to the washroom you may do so silently all right as long as you come back okay um all right one, one other thing um i would encourage you guys to really participate during this session if you have questions ask me those questions really clarify it with me and from time to time i'll also be going to you guys and ask you whether we're still on the same page if you're still understanding what the discussion is all about. All right? All right. So now um, you are here for the merchant orientation, merchant campaign orientation, and we're going to learn about everything that has to do with the campaign. All right? So I'm sure you guys are looking at my screen, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, well, of course, here are our objectives. Um, we are here so that we get familiar with the scripts. And if you notice, the merchant campaign has four, right? Are you guys done with the mock calls, by the way? Um, just for the first training. Yeah, I'm left, actually. They all two except uh, two of them. Oh, okay. All right. So at they least, through, at least they are through the training. Part. I'm sorry. They are through with the training. First part of training, they are through. Tomorrow they will have another uh, brush up training. Then mock call with the Christian, and oh. uh, rest of them, uh, rest of them have done their mock calls. They are all through. All right. Well, that's at least to your advantage because with the talk today with me, um, you'll know more about it, and so that, that gives you a lot more time to prepare for the actual certification mock call with Christian. All right, so so we wanna get familiar with the merchant scripts. We, wanna, we want to make sure that you know and you understand what it takes to deliver the scripts properly, right? And what we expect from you. Number three, uh, we're here so that everyone knows and everyone is on the same page. When we talk about special components of the merchant script, okay? And, of course, the most important part of the deal is we want to understand what makes a quality billable lead, right? Now, I want to I highlight two words in this line, okay? Quality and billable, all right? So when we say quality, we want to make sure that you guys are delivering the calls as professionally as you can, okay? Not like a checklist approach. Um, if I'm being honest with you, when we listen to a lot of calls, okay, we realize that there are two types of agents. Agents who give us a lot of leads, okay, and agents who are struggling, Okay. Now, we notice as well that the agents who are struggling are the ones who do not deliver quality calls. They do give us some billable leads. Sometimes it is a hit, uh, a hit and miss, right? Like some days they would be performing well, 
some days they're not. It's not really consistent. And oftentimes, they have trouble following the script. They have trouble delivering the script. Like, even though they're reading the script, they, they're not convincing in their roles. So when we say quality, we are looking for not just you doing what you need to do in terms of are you asking the right questions, right? Because if you look at the script, there are five questions in that script. There are five important questions. The agents who are performing well don't just ask the questions they build interest of the customers, right? And I, I'm going to explain more of that later, right? I just want to tell you guys that there is a huge difference between just doing the checklist approach. When we say checklist approach, you're just asking the questions because you're required to ask the questions, the five questions, right? If you're just doing that, if you're the kind of agent who will, I'm going to ask the five questions and then what the hell I'm going to transfer the call. You'll probably get a couple of leads here and there, but it won't be consistent. But if you are the type of agent who will develop good habits, right, quality calls, like when you listen to yourself, you sound amazing. You don't sound like you're reading you sound sincere, that you really want to help the customer, that whenever the customer has a lot of objections, you are able to address those objections. Therefore, you're providing quality calls. These agents are usually the ones who are consistently submitting leads. Like they didn't even have to make an effort. Right? That's why when I put that objective there, I just want everyone, everyone that we train going forward because there's a lot that's changed in this campaign in, in the last couple of weeks. And we realize that that's what's lacking. That's what's different. In the beginning, when this was brought to us by the clients, all we were told was to ask the questions. But we were never really told what our roles really are okay so you'll you'll get a better understanding as we go on um this training actually takes about a, an hour an hour and a half and so expect that right now it may be a little blurry in your head but as we go on i'm telling you it'll be clearer exactly what we need from you now Why did we change? Why did we make these changes? And why did we even desire to put certain measures like a quality monitoring system or a quality monitoring protocol? Well, we want to make sure that the leads are viable, are in fact viable. Um, when we say viable, come to think of it, guys, we are called lead generators and there is a reason we were put in there that we are on the phones to generate these leads right so if the information that we need to get from the customer are incomplete or unusable right then that's not really a viable lead so our goal is to make sure that we're submitting viable leads leads that the customers or sorry that the clients would appreciate right they might they may not really sell all sell on all of the leads that we'll provide but at the end of the day they will find value in the leads that we give them okay now of course we're here to make sure that you guys maintain integrity of work when we say integrity of work uh, because a lot of a lot of times the agents would say things that are that we haven't even discussed you know just so that they could sell or transfer the lead that they would circumvent certain policies but 
we want to make sure that you guys are aligned with the standards and that uh, we're not doing anything to hurt the relationship between us and the clients, right? Now, we also decided to put this these protocols because if we measure your areas of opportunities and also measure your best practices and provide you feedback, provide you coaching, provide you training, right? You will know how to improve yourself. And that feedback is crucial because you wouldn't know whether you're still in the right direction if no one's going to tell you about it, right? So that's why we have quality control. That's why we have quality monitors or quality analysts because we want to audit not because we want to criticize. That's not what we're here for. Our goal is not to criticize. Our goal is to find those areas of opportunity and make sure to address them so it doesn't happen again or so that we can all learn from them. And it only happens when there is feedback. Now, the ultimate goal is to get all of these information. Okay, so because every time we listen to calls, we realize what areas our agents are lacking, right? And if we have all those information, then we would be able to concisely say, ah, okay, that's what they need. Like we find out if you have trouble with um, rebuttals, then maybe we can set up training for rebuttals. If we feel like what you're lacking is neutral accent, then maybe we can create training for neutral accent. You see what I mean? You can only increase your competency if you know if you know your baseline. So if you know that okay, this is where I'm at right now. Because there is quality monitoring system. The system tells me I'm like this. If in a scale of one to ten, ten being the best agent, the qual the quality's aim is to tell you or give you feedback where you are what if you find out that you're at a five or a six right and the goal is to become a nine or a ten at least now you know and at least now the team has the capability to help you get there right because our goal is always to increase not just to stay on the five sixes and sevens we should always aim for the high eights nines and tens right so the goal is of course to increase our competency now before we even you know talk about the script talk about the quality my first question is what is a merchant account does anyone here even know that can someone tell me what is a merchant account Hello? <laughs> knock, knock. I was still here. I was still here. <clears throat> right? Can, can, can someone share with me? What do you know about a merchant account? What is it? Can I speak up? Yep, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry about Correct that. Me from... Okay, uh, may I Correct try? I'm wrong. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie, would you like to say? Um, uh, please. Can I speak, or is someone else speaking? Okay. All right. Uh, may I try? This yeah. is Tashu. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. Uh, it's a business account, uh, wherein we'll have a kind of uh, a swipe machine. Wherein we also get that in the malls or you know uh, in the department store. Mm -hmm. So I think it is in regards to that kind of machine. If I'm, exactly. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. Exactly. You're correct. You're correct. So thank you. For the, for the benefit of everyone, she is perfectly correct. When you when you talk about a merchant account, okay, you're talking about a business account it's a business account and that account allows the business to receive payments 
using credit cards and debit cards. All right? So, come to think of it, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you're in a westernized country, right, people don't carry a lot of cash anymore. There are several reasons, and I'll give you two. One of the reasons is that westernized countries like Canada, United States, right, uh, which is exactly where we're going to call, um, the people don't want to carry cash anymore because they find that it's a lot of inconvenience rather than help, right? Because, for instance, if you lose your purse or you lose your wallet and it has a lot of cash, right, the cash can easily be spent. You won't find it anymore unless... I don't know if you're going to change them by the serial numbers, right? And it's not like the banks will refuse to receive cash or stores or, or any merchants at all would, you know, refuse the serial numbers. Nobody's going to bother with that. A cash is cash. If you get cash, that's it. You lose it. If you lose it, it's not coming back, Right? But if you have credit cards, um, some people may, you know, may um, um, steal your identity. It, it happens. It happens too. Where, where people can misuse or abuse credit card information. That's true. However, <clears throat> the thing is if you lose credit card information, there is the chance that you can chase. Right? That you can chase your identity. If someone, let's say, if you lose your wallet and you have credit cards in there, right, you can call the bank and say, can you please close these accounts for the meantime because I lost my card. Can you just replace the card? Stuff like that. So you are secured, right? Actually, there is a third reason, and I think this is the most common reason why Western, uh, Western countries like it more is because um, in Canada and the United States, um, they commonly uh, submit their taxes by themselves. So they kind of audit themselves. Like they have their own accountants. They, are, they hire their own bookkeeping staff to do their accounting for them by the end of the year to, you know, to list down their expenses and submit their taxes, right? And imagine this. If you, if you carry cash all the time, the, the next thing you know, you ha you'll have like a pile, piles and piles of receipts, right? But if you have credit cards or debit cards or bank statements, it's easy to see exactly what your charges are. Right? So they find it so convenient. And as a matter of fact, an average American family has an average of six to seven credit cards between the husband and the wife alone. Right? So if you're a business and if you do not have a merchant account, you're actually losing a lot of the demographic. Like if you're losing a lot of market here. Right, so um, a merchant account is a type of bank account that allows businesses to accept payments by a debit card or credit card. Right, so what are we? What what is Merchant Review? So Merchant Review calls people or businesses in the United States and the and Canada in hopes of offering services merchant services right the thing is when when you have a merchant account so obviously you will have a machine right so for instance if i am a business and i sell pizza okay i'm a business and i sell pizza i would go to a bank and say um can you open a bank uh, a merchant account for me because I want my customers to order online using their credit cards and debit cards, or I want my customers to come into my store and be able to pay me using their debit cards and credit cards. 
right? So they will install something in my store, which is the, the, the actual POS, uh, the EMV machine, right? Where the customers would swipe their cards. They will install that. And because there is a lot of services in processing that that goes in the back office, right? We don't see that, but there's a process to it. There's a payment, like a chunk of our, uh, a chunk of our uh, income goes to the processing instead of it completely going to us. Come to think of it this way: if I were a business person, if I'm a businesswoman, and if uh, I sell my pizza for this is just for the sake of argument, okay? Let's say I sell my pizza for a hundred dollars each, okay? And because I have to pay merchant services some type of uh, fee, let's say let's say my bank charges me ten dollars per swipe. Imagine that. So if I if I'm supposed to earn one hundred dollars out of that pizza sold. Because of the merchant processing that I need to pay, the ten dollars goes to them and ninety dollars go to me. So instead of me earning one hundred dollars, now different banks or different merchant banks or different merchant processing banks offer different types of rates. Okay, and this is what we. This is where we come. This is where we come in. We try to call them and ask them, who are you working with? Do you already have a merchant account? Okay, well, if you have a merchant account, who are you working with? If they say, let's say Bank A, if they say Bank A, all right, well, it looks like Bank A is charging you like this much. What if I tell you I can charge you 25 to 45 percent or 25 to 40% less. That's what you are actually selling. You're selling the opportunity to, to get at least 25 to 40% savings. So, so far, are we, are we now understanding what Merchant Review is all about? Merchant yes, ma'am. Merchant yes. Review actually has a, a website. Have you tried visiting that website? So let me share that with you guys, because it might be helpful on your free time. I'd like you to go there. I'd like you to visit that. It's merchantreview.net, and it looks like this. I'm going to share it with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to know more about the business, Merchant Review, this is where you go. It has a lot of information. Now, I believe that to become successful in this campaign, you need a whole bunch of knowledge and not just rely on the scripts. Because if you're the type of person who just relies on the script and hope to God that you sell, then you're, you're not going to be too consistent. Unlike someone, unlike an agent who has prepared for and has a lot of knowledge, they will be able to answer any question that the customer might throw at them. Right? So I want to empower you. And I want you to help yourselves with the information that you have online. And if you can even do more research, you can actually Google, Google what other processing banks do we have? What other merchants are available in Canada? What other merchants are available in the United States? That way you know, right? You can research that on Google, right? So, let's move on. Okay. So, as I was saying earlier before I introduced you to the Merchant Review website, the Merchant Campaign is a sales process. Okay? And you are part of that sales process. You may not be selling right now because based on your, if you look at your script, are you selling anything? Not really. Not completely, right? It's because 
it's a sales process. It doesn't end with you. You need to transfer the call to another specialist, what we, what we call on the script as the rate specialist or the rate advisor, right? We call them that. What they actually do is that they check the lead that we provide and they make sure that the customer is interested to talk about their bill. Because how will we know how much they're being charged for their processing fees if we don't look at their bill, right? So that's the reason why we transfer them to the rate specialist. Because the rate specialist is going to determine whether these, uh, these customers are even interested to talk about it, right? Because if they are interested to talk about it, then they will set an appointment. So if you are lead generators, the second line is actually appointment setters. And once they've done that, once they've set that appointment, the closers will go to them. The closers will actually go to them and explain to them in person. Sometimes via phone, but sometimes in person. Maybe nowadays more, more, more not face to face because of the current situation, right? But what I'm trying to say here is if you understand what your role is, you will be able to succeed in this better. Okay? So you are the lead generator and you are the front liner. And I'm sorry, that's our favorite word nowadays. We are the front liners as lead generators to this sales campaign. Okay? It's like building a house. What do you do to build a house? You build strong foundation, don't you? You are the foundation. Without knowing who the decision maker is, which is question number one, without knowing whether we're even talking to people who are interested to get a merchant account or is already using a merchant account, what good is that for the client, right? We have to know who they're processing with so we can compare, right? Of course, we want questions number four and number five for many other reasons. So what I mean to say here is what you do is important in the sales process. And if you do, if you do not do it well, what kind of building or what kind of infrastructure are we building in the first place? It's going to topple. If we're going to build the second floor and the third floor where the roof deck is, because the roof deck is where we want to be, because that's the sale. That's the client making the sale. And remember, the clients are the ones paying us. If they make a sale out of the leads that we give them, they'll be happy, ultimately. So what you're building in this line or in this level is the foundation of that infrastructure. Now, let us talk about your role even further because I want you guys to get a better understanding. Okay? Your role is to make sure that the business is accepting credit cards and debit card payments or is at least interested to get a merchant service, okay? You should find who the decision maker is. You should know who the competition is because you're going to compare, or not you directly, but the rate specialist. You must know how the customer receives their merchant statements, and you must get the email address. But most importantly, and the most important role, okay, is that you lay the foundation for customer interest. And I'm going to prove to you why. Um, I'm going to share something here. And this is the scope of work or the contract that defines what is a qualified lead. I'm go not going to share you the entire uh, thing. I'm going to share to you some excerpts of that. So you know that this is what we agree.
to do. Okay. I'm going to send it to your chat boxes. So kindly look at your chat boxes, guys. Okay. Now, I assume that you also have your, um, what do you call this, the script, right? Do you have the scripts with you now? Yes, we do have. Okay, great. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to compare the SOW or the stipulations in the contract to the script that you have so we get a better understanding of what truly a qualified lead is. Okay, it says here, A and S, that's you, okay? A and S will be required to generate qualified transfer leads only with businesses who have a merchant account and interested in obtaining information about clients merchant processing services. Okay, before I move on, you might be asking, okay, so Miss Anne, if they don't have a merchant account and they're not processing credit cards yet, are we not allowed to talk to them? Is that, uh, is that opportunity gone? Well, I have an answer for that. That clause that I gave you in the chat box actually has a second paragraph. It says here, note, if the business does not offer credit card services to the customer or business has no merchant, client will allow these businesses to be transferred with the following conditions. Okay, which is similar to the conditions above, right? So to make the long story short, guys, if you look at the sentence in the SOW or the contract, it says there, a qualified lead, okay, you guys are required to make sure that the businesses that we call either have a merchant account or is interested in getting a merchant account. What part of the script says something like that? It's your question number. Which question is that? What do you think? Which question confirms that I'm going to flash it. So there, those are the questions. Which of these questions respond to that line? ANS will be required to generate qualified transfer leads only with businesses who have a merchant account. Um, question number one, wherein it is being asked um, if um, the one who's over the phone has a merchant account for the business? Well, close. Actually, it's question number two. Because you have to ask them, do you accept or you do accept All customers? Right. customers, correct? Right. So we want to make sure that they accept credit cards. In fact, guys... I will allow you to switch number one and two. If I were you, I will ask number two first. Do you get me? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't necessarily have to read them uh, one after the other. That's what I mean. If I think, I personally think that you can ask number two first. And it just makes sense to ask number two first. But it's okay too if you wanna if you wanna continue with number one, two, and three as is. That's fine with me. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you know I feel like I want to know first. Do you have a credit card or uh, you do accept credit cards for your customers? Correct. If they answer yes, okay, and just to confirm, you're the one that looks after the merchant account for the business, right? Right. See, it makes sense. Now, so it says here, a qualified transfer lead, we're going back to the contract, ladies and gentlemen. 
it says on the contract, a qualified transfer leave is as follows. Okay? It says there, must speak with a decision maker of the business. So that's question number one. Okay? No ifs, no buts. You must, it says on the contract, must speak with the decision maker of the business. I mean, it's pointless. Why would you keep talking to the receptionist? Or why would, you, even if you're talking to the owner, are you sure that the owner makes the decision? I've had several agents have that exact problem. The agents, <clears throat> on, one of the, on one of the occasions, the agent said, um, are you the owner of the business? I don't know. She just paraphrased number one. She, she read the first question, and then the customer didn't hear her clearly, so she paraphrased. When she paraphrased it, instead of saying the one that looks after the merchant account, she said, no, sir, I just want to know if you're the owner of the account or, or uh, you're the owner of the business, which is wrong because when, when we transferred that, uh, that uh, customer, it turned out that he wasn't the one making decisions. He said, I, I am the owner. I own the business, but I don't really manage the business. I have accountants there. And the accountant takes care of the merchant account. So that invalidates the lead. Right? So you have to be careful. It says very clearly on the SOW or the contract that you are supposed to speak with the decision maker. So you have to make sure. And guys, make sure that when you paraphrase, it means exactly the same. You want the person making the decision on the merchant account. If they can't even make changes to the merchant account, then why are we talking to them? So we have to make sure. Okay? The next clause is <clears throat> letter B. Excuse me. <clears throat> Letter B, ask who their current processor is. The operative word there is ask. Which question is that in the script? Guys, what, what question do you think it is in the script? Question number three. Question number three. Perfect. So that's why you ask, who are you currently processing with? Is it Moneris, Chase, Toronto Dominion? Okay, just a tip for you guys. The best agents, I noticed, they chunk it. The best agents, uh, the best agents would give the examples because uh, sometimes the, <clears throat> the decision makers do not readily understand what they mean when you say, who are you currently processing with, right? <clears throat> um, so what they, what the other agents normally do is they say, so who are you currently processing with? Is it Chase, Moneris, Toronto Dominion? Yeah. So when they hear the examples, they immediately know what we're talking about. Okay, now, I have to warn you that question number three is one of the most objected questions. When we say most objected, whenever we ask these questions, 50% like of the time, the customers do not want to provide the answer. So you might be thinking, now what am I going to do? Is that a valid lead? Guys, here is my tip, okay? And listen carefully. If your customers do not want to provide answers to number three, if they, if they don't want to, to provide the answer to number three, I want you to ask them why. I want you to convince them that you need this at least once. Now, if you look at your rebuttal scripts, 
there is nothing in there that tells you what to say. Okay? But I'm going to tell you which one you can use. You can actually use Digitech Rebuttal Script, page one, not interested. Okay? So, for example, you told the customer, terrific. Who are you currently processing with? Is it Moneris, Chase, Toronto Dominion? And the customer says, I'm sorry, I'm not at liberty to say that. So you can tell them, um, I totally respect that, Mr. Smith. What are some of your concerns? Can you, or please share with me some of your concerns. Do you know why I want you to ask that? The fact that the customer is not comfortable sharing that information with you, that means they have reservations. That means that you haven't fully laid down the foundation of the interest. You, you, you are not proving them, proving to them that you are trustworthy enough. That's why you have to ask them, what are your concerns? I mean, I can totally understand that. So, you know, if, if it were me, if I, if I was the agent, here is what I'm going to say. Well, I totally respect that, Mr. Smith. Um, I can understand why you wouldn't want to share, but um, can, can you tell me what your concerns are? Maybe, maybe I can answer those concerns. And you wait, whatever they say, and then you address what they say next. Or you can try this. You can say, Mr. Smith, I completely understand that you don't want to share that information. And the only reason really that I'm asking is because it's it will be really helpful for us to compare whether you're being charged more or if we have something better to offer. That's the only reason. Which is the truth, guys. That's the truth. The reason we're asking them what their current processor is is because how are we going to compare? What are we going to compare if we don't have anything to compare? Right? Now, after you've given, after you've given them that rebuttal and they still don't want to give that information, move on to the next question. Again, if you ask that question and they don't want to give it, you rebut. You fight for it. Give it one shot. And if they still don't want to give you that information, move on to the next information or move on to the next question. So you go to question number four. Would that still be a qualified lead? Yes, you still have a chance to have it a qualified lead. Right? Because based on the SOW or the contract, it says on the contract, ask. Ask who their current processor is. Did they say, did they say get? No, it says ask. Right? Are we cool? Do you understand? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. I, I yeah. just want to make sure you're, you understand this. Okay, yeah. next. And then another thing is another part of the ask, okay, which is letter C. Letter C in the contract means, it says, how are their statements received? Okay. Now, typically, customers don't resist this, okay? You just want to know, how do you receive your statements, right? But again, if this is still an ask, okay? If they don't want to say or if they don't know, that's fine. Move on to question number five. Get it? Are we still following it? Because it's an yes. ask, okay? Now, number five is on the contract is letter D, which says ask for a valid email address okay that's number five now if number three is a common 
uh, objection, right? You will also notice that every time you say number five, every time you read the fifth question, you will also encounter objections. Okay? You normally hear, okay, since uh, you already have my email address, why don't you just send me the information? Yeah, because naturally, it's human nature. I mean, why are we going to spend so much time on the form and you can send the email to me? Guys, number one, if we send them emails, how will you know if they will read it? Right? Number two, we don't even have the capability to send the email. Now, look at your rebuttal scripts. Look at your rebuttal script. What is it's the best response if the customer says, can you just fax it to me? Can you just email me? What is the best response? What page? Um, it's got to be the one that, um, um, that highlights the just fax or email your rate, which says, which says, unfortunately, I'm not qualified to give you the rate. Okay, so listen to what I will do, okay? If you say, so that I can add more information in your hands, what is your email? So customer gives the email. All right, thank you. Um, no, you know what? Can you just send me the email? Because uh, I need to go. Can you just send me the email? So I will say, sir, I'm not really qualified to give you the rates. Because it would actually be one of my brokers who has the ability to reduce your charges by 25 to 30 percent per month. Now, really, all we would like to do today is connect you with my rate specialist to make sure that you're not being overcharged. This would be a great time to do this before our business picks up. Now, Mr. Smith, come to think of it, how important would it be to you if you can reduce your costs 25 to 40 percent? Think about it, Mr. Smith. And then pause. Let him think about it. If he still objects, here is what I'm going to say. Right? I'm going to tell him, look, sir, I can, I mean, I, I don't have the ability to send you the, the email. It will still be my rate specialist who can do that. But come to think of it, sir, would you rather read or would it be, wouldn't it be better if you have someone who can actually answer any of your questions because you're already on the phones with them? I mean, I personally would like someone answering my questions right away rather than read, read something from a pamphlet, right? And then let it sink in. Because the reality, guys, is this. If I'm being, you know, if you're being completely honest with yourselves, if a person is truly interested, do you think they will object? Right? If a person is truly interested, they will not have any questions. They will immediately jump in. Now, why, why do customers object? One, they want to challenge you. Two, they still have doubts. Right? Yes. So if a customer is still challenging you, then don't be afraid. Don't back down. And you can tell that from the tone of your voice. And a good salesperson, a good lead generator, knows whether the customer is bluffing them or not. Right? And you also know if a customer is just hesitant for any reason. And if you can tell that the customer isn't sold on the idea, why would you stop? Why would you stop? Right? Is it because you know that you just have to ask the five question and then transfer and then you get paid? If you do that, you're doing the checklist approach. Which is exactly what I don't want you to do. Right? If, if, you're, if your mindset is, I'm just going to ask the five questions. Who cares if they answer or not? Right? And then after I ask them the five questions, I'm going to transfer them. Because that's what that's what I need to do. Ask the five questions and transfer. But no, guys, go back to your contract. It says there. 
Letter E. Interested in saving money? Letter F. Agrees to be transferred to client's agent to discuss their bill. So imagine that. After you ask them about their email address, the next script would be, thank you for sharing this information with me. I would like to connect you to one of our rate specialists who has the ability to eliminate 40% of your rates and fees. Would that be all right with you? This line, guys, that line on the merchant script actually asks them, is it okay? Can I transfer you? Are you interested to listen to my rate specialist? It's like that. We just didn't say that like that. We made it really subtle. We made it really assumptive. We said, would that be all right with you? I'll connect you with one of our rate specialists. Would that be all right with you? We're already asking them for their commitment not to buy because we're not really selling at this point. What we're trying to sell them is the opportunity to talk to the rate specialist, that they give us a chance. What chance are we asking them? Give the rate specialist a chance to discuss the bill and show you where the savings are. And we're not really asking them to commit. We're not asking them to cancel their contracts with their other merchants. We're not asking that. What we're asking them is, are you willing that I connect you to one of our rate specialists who has the ability to eliminate 40% of your rates and fees? Would that be all right with you? So naturally, your customers are going to answer yes or no, right? The best agents, guys, the ones who are earning so much, are the agents who can tell a solid yes and a fake yes. Because some people are going to say, uh-huh. So is, would that be all right with you? Okay. A stern okay, a, a bland okay, a blah okay. Uh, you know how it is when people just want to get, get on. Like they want to lose you on the phone already. Like let's just get it over and done with. So if the yes isn't solid, then you are failing your role. If the yes is not solid enough, then that means you need to take care of that objection. If the yes is not solid enough, there is an objection. They're not just, they're just not saying it. They're just being silent, but there is an objection. And I want you to find out that objection. Don't force to transfer. Because guys, at the end of the day, the rate specialist, there are two people as of now, the rate specialist will decide whether it's a good lead or not. Because if, if you transfer to them and they find out that these Customers were not really interested to begin with. And, and they're not willing to discuss anything else with them, with the rate specialist. All your efforts will have gone to waste. You've read an entire page of script, but ended up not getting paid for it. Do you realize that? So the answer is this, what is a valid lead? A valid lead is you ask the five questions, but if you don't get an answer, you kind of fight for it. As long as you ask the five questions, you push it so that the customer understands why you want to transfer them, right? A valid lead is you ask the five questions, you fight for the interest of the customer, and when you know that they are ready to be transferred, really ready, you transfer them. That's a billable lead. Okay? Now, when you transfer them to the rate specialist, it's important that you know that 
the rate specialist, after they speak to this customer, will actually ping us in Skype. And it's real time. The moment they finish that call with your customer, they will ping us and say, this customer from center like this, uh, phone number of the customer is like this, is good. When they say good, that means the customer agreed to talk about the bill. That there was some type of activity when they were talking. So imagine it, guys. If you did not solidify the foundation and you just asked the question and just transferred because you think that's what it is, you just lost one, one lead, right? So at the end of the day, if you come to think of it, at the end of the day, what makes a lead a lead is not the five questions. It's the interest of the customer. Because I will, I will go back to what I said before. Your role is to lay down the foundation for the interest of the customer. You are the frontliner of the sale. If the customer wasn't sold on your level, who's to say if they're going to get sold on the second and the third level, right? So your role is really, really important. Okay, now, look at your contract again. It says there, hold a 120 second buffer ladies and gentlemen that is non-negotiable okay what do i mean by 120 second buffer or basically two minutes <coughs> if you go to page two of the script it says there hello uh this is how you are going to transfer to the rate specialist okay so let's pretend that the customer agreed okay willingly agreed to be transferred Okay, you say, hello, this is Anne. I have John Smith on the line with contact number 123456. He currently uses Moneris and he receives statements online and would like to save money on their merchant services. Can you take it from here? When you ask the question, can you take it from here? Naturally, someone's going to respond. So wait for their respond, uh, response. So they say, yes right so they will say yes then you will say i will exit off the call now you will say i will exit off the call now thank you but you don't drop the call again you will say i will exit off the call now but don't drop the call instead what you do is you go on mute and then listen for two minutes you go on mute listen for two minutes and then drop the call. Leave them talking after two minutes. And the reason for this is, during those two minutes, we will be able to check if the customer says, I'm not interested anymore. No, I'm not interested. Did they lose interest because of the rate specialist or were they not interested in the first place because if within those two minutes we find out that they're not interested in the first place after they're talking to you then you won't get paid for that but in the same manner because sometimes the client would say or not the client the, the rate specialist might say uh it's no good it's not a good lead but what if you know deep inside you did everything you can? And it happens, guys. And I would fight heaven and earth just so you get paid for this. Okay? Because why would, why would I allow them to discredit you for something that you already did well? Because if you think you've done your part, you've asked the five questions. You've given them enough rebuttals. You fought for it and you tried to convince the customer. And then suddenly, 
and then suddenly it gets transferred to them and and the customer loses interest like how bad is that right so the 20 uh, sorry the the 120 second buffer is for you it's to cover you okay so remember that guys the 120 second buffer is to save you so don't forget that okay now you might be thinking how sure are we this time like what is going to happen it's simple guys don't overthink it i know what i'm saying is a little complicated it sounds too much in my head or in your head but it's simple here's what you're going to do you're going to get on the phones you're going to dial you're going to use the scripts as is right you're going to deliver it perfectly you're going to ask the five questions if they have any objections and if you feel they're not yet satisfied you're going to satisfy them until they're ready to be transferred once they're ready to be transferred then you transfer the call it's as simple as that and then we wait because you've already done your part okay uh in the past agents are always taking the checklist approach i'm just gonna ask and then i'm gonna transfer who cares right but this time that's not what we want you to do you should care you should care what what we say if we're going to submit these calls as valid leads you should care if they really are in fact valid leads because i want to send you back to that to that uh message that i showed you earlier that's your role okay the most important role is to lay the foundation for the customer interest. Is that clear? Do we have any questions so far? Hi, Anne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just, just, just one small question though. Um, so at the end of the day, um, are you are you saying that um, um, the rate specialist is the one who decides um, whether the lead that we provided is valid um, is valid enough for it to be billable? Yes, they have a say, but it's not like they are the final say. Like if 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 what you're talking about is the final decision, like. They have about 70% of that. Okay. Now, if you want to dispute it, let's, that's why I told you guys, if you feel you've done enough, if you feel you've done enough, we can always dispute it and listen to that call. And if we can prove it to the clients, because we already have a 120 buffer, right? If the clients was the clients agreed to that buffer so that buffer is for us to fight them because we can't I mean the question will always be this what if what if I've done my best and when I transferred to them they did a poor job and the customer lost interest because of them right that's probably yeah. what you guys might be thinking that's why we have a two-minute buffer, right? Because a truly interested customer, you'll hear that within two seconds or two minutes. Especially on the type of conversation that we have. Because they will they will very re-verify some of the information and then they will start asking about the bills, right? Okay, okay. So if the customer isn't even interested to hear about it, the customer is going to say, uh, no, 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 I'm not interested. And you know what the, they're going to do? They're going to rebut it again. They're going to try to save it and save it, right? 
But come to think of it, guys, if if the customers um, if the customer's belief was solidified on your end, on the frontliners, on the lead generators level, there is a very good chance that they will not resist the rate specialist. Unless the rate specialist was really poor. Right? And I'm telling you guys, they're not. When I say poor, I mean poor in sales skills. Right? Okay, okay. I have a question. Go. Okay, so um, isn't there a spreadsheet wherein we could be able to to see um, our stats for the day? Um, wherein we could be able to see if how many valid transfers do we already have? It is uh, shown real time. No, it's it's told. Uh, we we tell your managers real time about it. Like I said, every every time you call the rate specialist after the call, they tell us whether it's a good call or not. They tell us whether they were able to do something with that lead. Okay, so we report that. To whoever manages you so whoever manages you has the responsibility to update the production reports okay right and also your calls every time you transfer calls you're supposed to fill up an intake form you're supposed to fill up a form and that actually tells us how many leads you've already transferred so those things are properly documented. But if you want to know how many leads have been approved for the day, uh, that's information that we submit real time to your managers. They just need to keep track of that. All right. So we can um, right after the shift, so we can uh, already ask our manager if how many um, qualified transfer do we already have? I think you should, but I, I uh -huh. don't think I'm the right person to answer that. Yes. Uh -huh. Because uh, my protocol is different than your center's protocol. Okay. Because that will be a decision that your team leads, your managers will decide on, not me. Okay. Uh, what I know is that, what guys, what I know is that every time the clients tell us the result, we give it to you immediately. Not to you, but to your managers. So it's up to your managers whether they want to share that information real time as well. So I, I don't know how you guys are going to talk about it amongst yourselves. Okay, and most of the time it is uh, not. Say, for example, if it is five ten leads, uh, you know, transfer made, it is uh, not always uh, we get a feedback on that. Sometimes it takes, uh, you know, weekend time also. Well, that, like I said, Johnny, I think that must be something mm -hmm. you no, uh, with them with the agent. Right, right. I just thought of thought of informing that the reason because uh, you know it might create a confusion between uh, the agents and the managers and the one handling them. And that's the reason I wanted to clear it right away. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? Okay. If not the questions, then I will proceed. I'm going to show you now the quality sheet. Now you might be wondering, okay, so the qualified leads are basically I need to ask the five questions. I need to make sure that I transfer the call and I need to make sure that the customers are interested to talk to the rate specialist. Okay. So uh, after they talk to the rate specialist, the rate specialist will 
ping us in Skype. Us. Me. Your project managers, Chris, Christian and Junidy. We are the ones receiving that. Okay, but not me most of the time. It's Junidy and Christian. Okay, just to clarify that. Uh, so, after they receive the message, it gets sent it, it gets sent to you guys. Now, before quality analysts validates whether uh, whether it's a valid lead or not. But nowadays, we don't do that anymore because the clients decided it's better that they do it. That's why nowadays, the rate specialists are the ones who say, is it good, is it bad, is it whatever. Now, like I said earlier, guys, again, remember this, and it's recorded anyway. If you feel that you have done enough on that call, right? And guys, make sure that if you dispute, you're sure that the customer was interested, right? Because usually the dispute is about the interest of the customer, not about the five questions. Because... The five questions are easily asked. You can ask the five questions. I have no problem with that. I don't doubt that. But the, the thing in question all the time when it comes to dispute is whether the agent was able to solidify the interest of the customer. So when you dispute, you have to be sure that you are, you know, that you have solidified that interest. Right? So when you ask them if I were you, let's say you say, uh, uh, I would like to connect you to one of our rate specialists, yada, yada, would that be all right with you? And then you feel, and you feel like they're not yet sure. And then you try to ask them, okay, you, you still sound hesitant. Do you have any other concerns before I transfer you? They will tell you, right? So you address them, right? So you tell them, okay, um, I've already answered your question. Are you ready to at least, least uh, listen to our rate specialist? I mean, Mr. Smith, it's not like you're going to do this now. We just want you to listen, and maybe you'll pick up you'll pick up some information that will help you decide in the future. It's not like we want you to commit to changing now. All right, and then ask them. Okay, so would you now be ready to be transferred? Ask them. Solidify that yes. Okay? Because if we hear that, if we hear that from you, then we'll go back to the client and say, look, I, cannot, I can go back to the client and say, this agent, this agent from Joy Deep's team, she fought, she fought for it. She had to fight and she had to rebut. She was able to provide all the rebuttals. And she even asked the customer four times, are you ready to be transferred? Are you sure? Like, we would fight for it, right? Do you know, uh, I'm sure you might be thinking, what if we don't fight for it? Why won't we fight for it? I mean, I'm not saying we're always going to win against the clients. Remember that. We're not always going to win, but we will fight for you. What guarantee do you have that we will fight for you? Because your leads also get a spade. Like if you have, if you only have 10 submissions, then we only also get paid for 10, right? I mean, if there is an opportunity that you can get paid for 20, why, why will we not fight for you? That doesn't make sense, right? Come to think of it. So, the quality now, on the, uh, since we're not going to validate your calls, what we are going to do now is just monitor your calls and check if you are, in fact, doing what you can. What are your opportunities? I mean, we're going to look at your calls, listen to your calls, and find out why you're not able to sell as much as we expect you to. So basically, um, we're going to look at for best practices and opportunities and then give you feedback, give you coaching, and so on and so forth. Okay?
So that form is this. And it's pretty simple because it follows exactly the call flow of the script. I'm going to share it here. So it has several components, the secretary screen, the opening spiel, the presentation, handling objection, communication skills, closing. And then we have zero tolerance. Okay. So the passing score for quality, okay, the passing score for quality is 92%. Whatever score you get from the quality audits, you will get a feedback. So how often do we do audits? Very randomly. It's very random. I want to say one, once every week you will get one, but don't worry if you get none. It's not really going to affect you because <clears throat> quality is just something that we use to, to see whether the agents are still in line with the standards for now, okay? Now, um, so if quality doesn't have anything to do with the pay, why, why do we even bother to do it? Like I said, it's for coaching purposes, it's for feedback, it's for training purposes. Now, there are two parameters in the zero tolerance though that affects your billables, okay? So like I said, you need to ask the five questions, at least ask. It says, this position the call as qualified lead or transfer when not all five critical points were satisfied. So let's say you transfer the call and you miss question number four. Then you will get a zero for QA and you will also not get paid. That's what we mean by this. Because when you disposition the call as a qualified leader transfer, that means you should be able to ask the five questions. At least ask. Okay? On the other hand, if you disposition the call as a qualified leader transfer, when the customer expressed disinterest in the product, then it means... AOR zero, and you will not get paid also for that. Name. Let me give you an example. Okay, there was a call. Um, um, the agent um, was able to ask. That time we still had four questions because the script was actually revised just last May twenty first. Okay, at that time there were only four questions, so. The agent was the agent was okay actually. Um, the agent had uh, a very personable approach to when she reads the script. It was okay. It's just that the customer was adamant that he, he was busy. I didn't want to get. Um, can I do this another time? Because I'm busy right now. I don't have time for this. But the agent said. Um, look, sir, this is only going to take about two to three minutes of your time. Okay? So maybe because the customer was nice, he went along with it. So to, to make the long story short, the whole script was read. The five questions was uh, the five questions were read to the customer. Okay. Now came came the transferring time. She said, would that be all right with you? And the customer again said, is this going to take a while? Can we, can we just do this another? Can you call me back? But again, the agent insisted. And the agent said, no, sir, this will only take two to three minutes of your time, I promise. Okay? So again, because the customer was nice, he went along with it. And then transfer the call. Now, in a perfect world, when you transfer a call, somebody will answer right away. Okay? But there are some days where it's really queuing, like there's going to be a hold music. So obviously, that irritated the customer even more. 
Because I already told you, I mean, he must be thinking in his head, I already told this girl that I'm busy, that I can't do this. And she said, this is just going to take about two to three minutes of my time. But look at me waiting on a hold music. Right? So, they were on hold. They were on hold. And then, the customer again called the agent's attention. Hello, I'm so sorry. Uh, can we do this another time? And then the, the, the agent said, no, no, this will only take, uh, I mean, they're going to answer something like that. So, I don't know what happened, but the agent disconnected. Mm, something fishy. The agent disconnected and left the customer listening to the music. So what was it still warm transfer? No, because you just left the customer. There was no warm transfer. Right? The agent left the customer on the line. Hoping that someone will pick up. But the customer was there listening to the whole music. And the customer went, hello, are you there? Hello. And then he realized, maybe he realized, okay, nobody's here anymore. I got left behind. So he, the customer, in turn, dropped the call. Now, based on the agreement or on the contract, if, if we are unable to reach the clients or the rate specialists, the rate specialist actually has the ability to call back, right? So what the rate specialist did was he called back, okay? And you know what happened? The customer was really pissed because not only was his time not respected, the agent wasn't listening. The agent left him on the hold music. There are all sorts of wrong in this case, right? This is what I want you guys to understand. The customer already said, can we do this another time? When the agent asked, would that be all right with you? The customer already expressed his hesitation. I mean... It doesn't matter if the call is going to take two to three minutes, if, if, if it was even true. But the thing is, it lasted more than that. But nonetheless, that's not the point. The customer told the client, you know what? If you had just called me back, maybe I would have, uh, I would have changed my provider. But you guys pissed me off. The hell with you? And he dropped the call. See, this is why I keep telling agents, listen to your customers. I mean, they, they tell you, maybe not in words, but the tone says a lot. The tone of their voice will tell you whether they're truly interested or whether they're truly free to listen. So that's the lesson, guys. That's the lesson there. Um, be, very, uh, be very aware of your customers. Okay, so when we say we disposition the call as qualified lead or transfer, when the customer expressed this interest in the product, the customer is no longer interested to be transferred. Why did you force? Why did you force that? Right? If the, if the agent only said, Okay, Mr. Smith, I understand. Can I just call you back tomorrow? It might have been better. Right? So that's what we mean by that. That clause. Okay? Now, I'm sure you can see these white components, the parameters. So it means that if you make a mistake out of any of these four parameters that are zero tolerance, you'll only get zero, but there might be a good chance that you will still get paid, right? And you might be thinking, okay, so I, as long as I ask the five questions and transfer the customer, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to get paid even though I don't follow the script. I'm not going to read the script anymore. 
I'll just make sure to ask the five questions and then transfer. But you'll get zero, right? You'll get zero, and we have a three strike in a rule. Uh, sorry, a three strike rule in a month. Okay, which means that if you get three zeros in a month, we will go back to your managers and say, we need to replace this person. So don't make a habit of the zeros. Because at the end of the day, like I said, the best agents who consistently do it, who consistently performs and gets good leads, are the ones who, is, who are overall. They're not just good at reading the five questions and transferring. They're good at delivering. They're good at intuition. And guys, 100% of the time, the agents who are good are the ones who know their rebuttals. So if I were you, if, if you guys want to be successful in this campaign, that's what you need to do. You need to be familiar with the rebuttals. Because we have components like these. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discuss all these components one by one because really it's it's pretty simple. Like the opening spiel, you just need to follow them. If if the components are not applicable to you, they become uh, they become bonus points. For example, if the call went smoothly and they did not make any objections, then I will give you three points here. Since they did not have any objection, then you get three points. Right? It's pretty easy. The components are easy. We don't have to really go through all that. But uh, I just need you to focus on handling objections, guys. Because... Based on what our observations were, people always fail there in objections. And we always lose leads because of the objections. Because the objections weren't addressed properly. Or the agents have opportunities with the objections. Or saying their rebuttals. Okay? I mean, when it comes to active listening, we know, we know you guys have experience. We know active listening. Right? We know uh, keeping the tone friend, friendly and professional. We know that. Um, grammar, we'll, we're going to let slide your grammar because who, may, who doesn't make mistakes? Even Americans and Westerners make, mis make mistakes on their grammar because it's grammar. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes, like me, I've been talking for eight hours now straight. <laughs> I'm really exhausted. So, Yes, you do make mistakes. Um, it's, it's different when you're writing English because you get to proofread before it gets, you know, published. But once English is out of your mouth, it's out of your mouth, whether it's correct or not. You just basically have to correct yourself, right? And I cannot count anymore how many times I corrected myself during this session. So if I were to nitpick on your grammar, that's just going to go crazy. So as long as you guys understand each other, you and the customer, then that's fine with us. Okay? That's what we mean by no gravely impacting. There's uh, everything, every single component here is pretty easy to understand. The only reason that we want to talk today is because I want you guys to understand the five questions and how it relates to the contract, how important they are. Okay, so the message that I want to leave you is ask the five questions, fight for the information they don't want to provide, and scrutinize your customers. Are they really saying yes? Or do they just want you off the phone? And if that's the case, I want you to fight for it at least once before totally giving up. And if you think you did not do enough on that call, don't push it. Don't try to submit it as a valid lead. Okay? Let's face it. Move on to the next call and do better on the next call. Right? And I want you to fully understand your role. Because if you have 
a distorted understanding of what the role is, then you will not be able to perform it well. And your role is very important in the sales process. And you are probably the most important part of it all. Okay? Because if you if if the lead is broken from your level, who who are the clients going to sell to in the first place? And that's exactly the reason why they hired all of us at this level as lead generators. They hired us so they'll have opportunities to sell. Okay? Questions, guys, before we end the session? Un. Yep, go ahead. Go with the questions. Uh, hello, um, Anne. Yes? Yeah, um, I've, 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 just, um, I've just got a question here. Um, I think you, you highlighted the, um, you highlighted the most important parts of our contract, which is actually the, um, which is actually the five, the five questions. Mm -hmm. But then we've got, we've got that scenario where, um, the client, um, doesn't accept credit cards or debit cards, but but we we want to um, we want to make them interested in setting up a merchant account. If they're interested in, um, I think Joy Joy, Joy Dips. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. No, your your microphone was making some noise. Yeah, oh, let's uh, guys. If you're not talking, let's go on mute. Um, okay, okay, thank. But right, thank you. I can hear now. Yeah, I was saying that if we've got a client, um, they're not accepting credit cards or debit cards, but they're interested in probably maybe setting up a merchant account. Um, does, so it means that we, we not necessarily need to ask the five questions since they don't have that facility. But us transferring them to, to the rate specialist, we can probably maybe persuade, um, maybe persuade the client to set up a merchant account. Does that qualify as a lead? Absolutely. Uh, if you read the second part that I put on the group chat, uh, note, it says note. I'm going to hang on. Can you look at that? Note. I'm going to resend it just to be sure. Right here. Okay. It says note. If the business does not offer credit card services to their customers, meaning the customer doesn't have a merchant account yet. Yeah. Okay. This is your question, right? What yeah. happens? Yeah. This is what happens. You continue. You will make sure that you are talking to the decision maker. Okay. Just make sure that they're interested, right? They don't mm -hmm. have the merchant account yet, but they want to listen. They're interested in getting one, maybe. Okay, so you you go straight to. So are you the one uh, handling the merchant account, right? So letter A, must speak with the decision maker. Letter B, ask if they have customers wanting to use their credit card. So how are you going to ask that? It, well, there's not really a script for that, but it's easy enough to ask. You can say. Uh, just to confirm, you're indeed the one that looks after the merchant account for the business, correct? Yes. Okay, well, in, and you do have customers that are interested to use their credit cards to pay for your services? Yes. Okay. Ask for a valid email address, letter C. And D, are they interested in speaking with an advisor? E, it's the same. It's practically the same. Oh, yeah, 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 I see that. Right? So, yeah. if you, um, so basically what you're going to do is just say, uh, you're the one that handles the merchant account for the business, and uh, you have customers that are interested to, to pay credit card, right? Okay, sir, uh, can I add more information to your hands? What is your email address? Okay, now thank you for sharing this information with me. 
I would like to connect you to one of our rate specialists who has the ability to eliminate 40% of your rates and fees. Would that be all right with you? So, naturally, guys, I will not force five questions if the five questions are even necessary because it's an entirely different situation. So, yeah. in this, so, in this case, as long as you follow that one one question so basically that's just a total of three questions are you the are you the one processing uh sorry are you the one that looks after the merchant account do you have customers that are interested in using your their credit cards and debit cards to pay for your services and then can i have your email address only three questions and then trans questions and then transfer okay okay i i have I have to a question to the end. Uh, this this uh, lead wherein the customer does not have is not processing debit card and credit card. This lead becomes billable only when they opt uh, to avail the services from Digitech, right? Correct. Okay. That's uh, the difference. Different. That's the yeah. difference, guys. Um, for the customers who already have a credit card uh, or, or a merchant account. What is that? Um, for customers who already have a merchant account. Okay. Um, we just need to transfer them to the rate specialist. Okay. And the rate specialist will tell us if this is a good lead or a bad lead. Right? It doesn't necessarily have to end up in a sale. You get what I mean? However, for activations, it needs to be fully activated. This uh, this term, this is what I would like to clarify the uh, everyone, that this uh, uh, you know situation does not fall under paper transfer. All right. Hello. Who uh, who are you asking that question? No, I, I'm I'm referring to you and saying all that if if we if we go ahead and transfer a customer who is not processing a debit card and credit card, we can still. I'm telling my understanding uh, that uh, if if you still go ahead and ask those questions and transfer it to the race specialist, this lead will become billable only when the customer activates the services with Digitech. Otherwise, this is a not billable uh, non billable lead. This is the difference between. And the, the one who is processing debit card, credit card, and uh, the one who is not processing debit card and credit card. The one processing debit card and credit card, the five questions and, and your perseverance to that, to, ob to obtain this information, uh, makes, uh, you know, makes this lead fall un under the paper transfer category, whereas this one does not uh, fall in the paper, uh, you know, paper transfer category, but falls under paper activation category. Am I, am I correct, Anne? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, this is very important, uh, you know, that you understand. Otherwise, you know, there might be a misunderstanding for this. I have mentioned that in the contract as well. Yes, please, if you have any more questions for Anne. Uh, no. Okay. Cindy? Uh, Maha? Um, so basically what we're talking in here is not just, okay, not just a valid transfer, but of course, a uh, valid sign up, correct? No, for the second situation. Yeah, for the second situation. Is that Maha? No, no, no. It's not me, I think. No, 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 no. Let's be clear. The final message of Joy Deep is simple. If the customer has no merchant account yet, you can continue this conversation with them. Ask them if they are the decision maker. Ask them if their customers are interested to process credit cards. Okay? And then get their email address. And then get them. Okay? Once you transfer them, sorry, Joy Deep, can we go mute? Oh, 
because there's a lot of static. Um, it, Hello? Guys, sorry, who is that? There's a lot of static. It's really distracting. Those who are not on call, please mute. I mean, those who are not on call, please mute. Um, only are you we... and me are not on call. And Maha. I'll mute you. Okay. Maha, unmute. Okay. Okay. Joy Deep, I yeah. think it's yours. Okay, let me move myself down. Okay, if you read the clause on letter E, letter E on your chat box, after the transfer, okay, the business must agree to be activated to become a merchant. That makes it a valid lead. Okay, There's, that's a whole lot of difference. On the first scenario, where the customer has a merchant account, they don't have to sign up. All they need to do is listen to the rate specialist. They don't have to sign up. Are we on the same page, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. On the second scenario, they don't have a merchant account yet. Okay. So you continue to talk to them. But how are you going to get paid for that lead? You will only get paid for the lead if they end up signing up. Get it? Yeah, that's clear. That, I it. hope that's clear, guys. Yes, I get it. Any other questions, guys? One last one before we go. Um, and, and sorry, just, um, there's something that I just realized. There's an example that you gave us, um, a scenario where like you are in the middle of, um, transferring a client to the right specialist, eh? Mm -hmm. Say probably maybe the client here has been really interested. And then maybe it's one of those days when, um, you've got a lot of traffic going to the right specialist and the client, um, ends up, um, being impatient and then he hangs up and then the right specialist might decide to call back that client and maybe shows interest and um, ends up getting the services and everything does the um, does the agent still get paid for that yes because it turns out to be a valid lead okay right? but, uh, but, but and we i'm sorry yeah go ahead please so the customer was the agent was lucky, even though the agent pissed off the customer because the rate specialist was good. The agent got paid because of the rate specialist. Do you get it? <laughs> okay. Unfortunately. Yes, but there's a situation here that one twenty second buffer recording. We will not have that, which is mandatory. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is a point. So, if, uh, whether it will be valid if a sale is made, because most of the time it's, it's the uh, wait time to get rate special. That this is the uh, uh, you know uh, the customer off. It's not the agent or not the specialist. There's a volume of call they receive. You know, agents when uh, specialists when they are you now put on hold. Yeah, that was, uh, that was to end. And I'm, I hope I'm not irritating with these questions. This is, this, I feel these are a little important. There's a reason I'm asking. Okay, so do you have any other questions? Um, very last question. Let's say, for example, we are already, um, you know, already transferred um, the um, the, the customer on the rate specialist mm -hmm. and then um, they are already talking to each other for like um, just 15 seconds something like that or 30 seconds then the customer um, dropped the call so what would for what would, reason uh, there are actually um, things that uh, that happen that way 
Yeah, I understand that. So this is why we have the buffer, guys. This is exactly why we have the buffer. Yes. I, Listen, yeah, I, I, do, I do understand that, that we have to stay on the line I for it to... You, what happened? Why did the customer drop the call? Is it the rate specialist fault? Or did the customer drop the call because the customer got pissed? What, 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 the, what is the situation? Because it depends on why. Uh -huh. it, it depends on why, really. Come to think of it. If the customer drops the call suddenly, 15 seconds into the call with the rate specialist, we must listen to that call. Your, your situation is hypothetical, so you have to complete it. What happened there? Is, is the rate specialist annoying? The, is that why the, the, the customer dropped the call? Or was there a long wait? Okay. Because if there is a long wait, as an agent, you have to keep dialing and dialing and dialing and dialing until you get... Because the, the goal... But is no, not not the tone, not the whole tone, what I'm trying to say. It's already, I'm going to say, for example, we are already on hold, okay? We are waiting for the 120 okay. um, seconds. And um, the rate specialist and the customer are already talking to each other, okay? okay they're already talking, okay. Yes, and, and suddenly the customer hangs up the phone. So basically what's going to happen, the rate specialist, is going to call them back again if they're going to hang up not disconnected right it's or disconnected it. rather i mean disconnected i'm sorry and when they get disconnected is it accidental are you sure it's disconnected it's not uh, let's disconnected. let's say it's disconnected okay it was disconnected in the contract it says that the cost that the client must call them back okay all right. So, um, with that reason, uh, we're still going to submit the form, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. In fact, you have to click submit the minute someone picks up. Okay. Okay. That's clear now. So yeah, the I moment, yeah. Yeah. So Go so on. the moment. Okay. So the moment the rate specialist and the customer are already talking to each other, um, this mm -hmm. is the time that we're going to submit the form, right? Well, not when they're talking to each other, when you're talking to the rate specialist. Remember you have a long spiel? Hi, my uh, name is Anne. I'm uh, okay. uh, Yeah, that part. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, hello. Yep. Yeah, I just have a question that's really catching my concern. Okay. So, uh, let's take it for an instance that uh, I have a customer online and I've been talking to him for about two to three minutes already. And uh, he's ready for the transfer as well. Then after, uh, suppose if I try to contact the specialist and there is a long hold, I keep, uh -huh. you know, asking the customer to kindly bear with me, get connected, and blah, blah. So uh -huh. uh, in this case, is there any kind of average time that we can give the customer, say, in saying that uh, it'll hardly take about two minutes to get connected or so? Well, there's not really. Um, I would say it's best. it's best to set their expectations straight. There might be two to three minutes wait time. And then ask your customer. Don't be afraid to ask them, are you still willing to wait? I'm sure in your mind, you might be asking, if I ask them if they're willing to wait, they might say no. So I lose this lead. Would you rather to call back them or lose them because they got annoyed of the wait? If I were you, I will tell them, sir, are you still willing to wait? If they say no, I'm not. You know what, Mr. Smith, I don't want you to wait as well. Can I call you back after an hour and then let's try again? Right? Exactly. It exactly. sounds I so would... much better. Like you are concerned. Like you're concerned yeah. for their welfare, for their business. Yeah, exactly. I was just expecting you to give them the same answer, actually. And over that, on the, in the contrary, I have another question. 
So mm-hmm. in case if the customer says that I would want you to give me a call back after mm-hmm. an hour or so, mm-hmm. and I call the customer back. Mm-hmm. In the next call, do I have to repeat all the questions again, or can I get no. the transfer directly? No, 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 no. You don't have to repeat it. You just need to transfer directly. Just introduce okay. yourself. Yeah. Just tell them hi. This is a. Uh, I would say hi. This is Anne. I spoke to you today, Mr. Smith. So are you ready? I, I want to transfer you now to our rate specialist. There you go. You're right. So I'll just remind him that we had a conversation earlier, and that is just go for exactly. transfer. Exactly. Okay. Thank you so much, Anne. Yeah. And, and a, a customer who is truly interested will always wait for that callback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, maybe in cases when he's busy or he needs to go out somewhere, there might be instances where we have to drop the call on transfer as well. Yes, that's right. So there's always an option to call back the customer again. That's good. That's good, yeah. Better to call back, guys. That's for the benefit of everyone. Don't be afraid. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. I'm so sorry. We have to cut this. Uh, it's already 6 a.m. Um, if you have any further questions, just direct the questions to Joy D. And Joy D will be the one to direct them to me. Or you can direct it to Christian or Juna D. Okay, sure. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you around. So when are uh, you going to dial? Joy Deep, are you dialing tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow they'll dial. They'll start tomorrow. Okay. All I right. I was just waiting for the session. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Good luck tomorrow, then. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Don't stay back. Still different, right?